and welcome back to the Cover 3 podcast here on CBS Sports. That's Danny Cannell, that's Barton Simmons, that's Tom Fernelli. I'm Chip Patterson. The new college football playoff rankings have been released here on this Tuesday night. Danny, go ahead. <laughs> ah, just have at it, right? I am, uh, you know, it's just a bummer to me because I, I love college football. It's my favorite product, uh, a sports product in our country. It is the best as the most passionate fans, but we have the absolute worst way to determine a national champion of any sport in the world. And where I really feel bad for is the group of five teams. Like they are perennially left out. And yet every year they're teased Ooh, maybe this is the year. Ooh, you guys started at seven. Ooh, Cincinnati, you guys have nice little chance. Maybe. And on every debate show, it's, you know, hey, without that four spot and tech and Cincinnati's always talked about, or it's UCF, or it's Houston, or it's Boise State. And every single year, the committee ends up giving the middle finger to the group of five. So what I want to see happen this year is the group of five to give the middle finger back to the selection committee and say, you know what? We're going to have our own playoff and we're going to go have eight game or eight teams square off in our own playoff and determine a champion because it is not right. The way the group of five gets treated. <laughs> Thoughts. <laughs> well, first of all, I don't think that having your own group of five playoff is giving the middle finger to the playoff committee. I think that is letting the playoff committee win. Yeah. You know, if you're just going to continue to like, make their job difficult and continue to, uh, I mean, just get, put the pressure on them with these Q and A's after the, the announcements every weekend, then, then you see people on fighting and swinging and trying to get in there. That said, I, I would like to have a group of five playoff. I would love a group of five playoff unless we're going to have an actual, you know, power five, you know, FBS playoff, eight, 16 teams, whatever it is, which would be fantastic. But I don't, unless that happens, then, yeah, bring on a group of five playoff. I'd watch. I are you really like making it difficult on the selection committee though? If you stick just making it and, awkward, you're not making it difficult. You're just making it awkward. I don't. I don't think anybody there cares. It's I mean, true. it's true. Yeah. It's like the last. I, I said this on Twitter before we started recording because there has been a lot of similar reaction to like that's like yours, Danny, and I, I agree. I what I'm about to say is not an argument for who is better or who would win and any of that, who deserves it. None of that. It's just the last seven years of this college football playoff committee have been the same thing every time. And yet every single year, every single week, people are hoping things are going to be different. And then when they get kicked in the face again, they're like, what the hell? <laughs> okay. Before you go totally Charlie Brown on this, we are still new in this, right? Ultimately this is year seven of the college football playoff. And I understand that the BCS had, had a limited window, but you know, if you're going to be one of these freedom fighters for the group of five, that's really just sitting there, you know, beating, hey. beating the drum and, and trying to, to change perception because perception is a hundred percent what's happening because human beings are making the decisions right now. So you could, potentially change some minds of the people that are in that selection committee room and the selection committee changes at least, you know, two or three people pretty much every single year, but you know, it's, it's still new. Like I, it's, I I'm both with a group of five team will never make a 14 playoff. Like I agree with that take Tom, yeah. but I also understand why the people who want to fight for it, I don't think it is a senseless argument just because we are dealing with something that can be very fluid and minds can be changed on the fly. I don't think fighting, arguing for it's senseless. I didn't say that. I do disagree with you saying that my group of five never being in the top four is a take. It's not a take. It's, <laughs> it's just the reality of the situation. I mean, Why? yes, we're only we're only seven years in, but they've released if they're like what seven eight rankings a year in a normal season. So we're about fifty sets of rankings in, and I don't know this number off the top of my head. But what's the highest any group of five team has ever been ranked? I know they've never had one in the top four. Cincinnati no. is the highest that anyone has started. Any group of five team, the Cincinnati is the highest that any one of them has started. That's yeah. surprising. They, they're, they're not going to put them in. I mean, like, I, the so reason Iowa State jumped Cincinnati is because Iowa State's eligible for the playoff. Cincinnati isn't. 
But see, there that's not a rule. That's so they should make it a rule and make it clear cut instead of teasing these poor kids. That's what bothers me the most. The fact that these kids, these pl- these football players at Cincinnati, at Coastal Carolina, at Louisiana, pick your group at UCF, pick your UC, uh, group of five team are told from the minute they're recruited to these schools, to the minute that they step on campus, to the minute that they leave, oh, if we we can get to the playoff, we are a part of the playoff system, and it's not. They are sold a bill of goods that's an absolute lie. So no that's what needs to change. No. No one sold them a bill of goods that they would play in the college football playoffs. Look, oh. I, you don't think I, UCF after the 2017 Cone National UCF Football probably uh, might have. You don't no, think look, they use that as a recruiting tool? Say listen, we are co-champions? Here's the thing. Here's the thing that you're missing is, is that the group of five teams aren't good enough. They aren't. They aren't How good. Do they don't have know? good enough How players. How do we know if they never get to play? You're, like well, we thought that's five all because, because year in, teams. year in and year out, there are 80 group of five, not 80, but there are 60 group of five teams getting their heads pounded in by power five teams. And then there are two or three that win a few but, games. Well, what about Kansas? Kansas gets pounded by everybody anyway, but they and still Kansas have, isn't going to be in the power playoff. <laughs> they're they not would, in the playoff. If, if they won the big 12 next year, they would be in. Of they wouldn't be, it would be held yeah. against them that they were bad this but season. But they would have beaten Why Oklahoma, Texas, Oklahoma State. They would have beaten a whole bunch of good teams. Like, I understand what you're saying. They'd be two good teams. But because the whole Big 12 isn't great. Coastal and Carolina it, beating, like, you know, BYU, it's great. It was a fun game. But beating BYU isn't the same thing as getting through the SEC well, and winning the hold SEC. Hold on. And here's the I other agree. Thing. I agree with that. But time out just for a second. Because BYU, and I don't know, I think we had a better reality of the situation with BYU than even some of the analysts that I saw on ESPN who on college game day were raving about BYU. Oh, this team looks the part. They've got NFL talent. Their offensive and defensive lines could go toe-to-toe with anybody in the country. And then when they get beat by Coastal Carolina, instead of replacing Coastal Carolina in that conversation, it's, oh, well, BYU clearly wasn't that good. Why don't we treat Coastal Carolina the way we treated BYU is all BYU needs is a signature win. Like that's all they need. And they could have a seat at the table. Why isn't that the case for Coastal? I mean, (laughs) let me just, I've got a couple of thoughts here. First of all, the, the idea that uh, these guys are, are like, are playing like it's all a lie the beast, like the playoffs are a lie and their existence in college football is a lie and a farce is, is ridiculous. I played, I played in the Ivy league. There's no playoffs. We were not allowed to go to the playoffs. There's no postseason. You have 10 games. That's it. No bye week That's it. But that doesn't mean that like, like we were still striving to be ranked in the national polls in the top 25 polls in FCS. It didn't mean anything at the end of the day. We don't get a banner saying number 23 ranked team in the country, but it's still a point of pride. They're still playing for something. If they can, if they if what they're playing for is just to be the highest ranked group of five team of the year, goes to be the highest ranked Sunbelt team I've ever in the, in the uh, CFP playoffs uh, standings, then that's something as well. I also think that. We're, we're like, we're sitting here raving mad about the injustice being done to the group of five. And I see all the, the reporters on Twitter, uh, furious, the coastal's not ranked higher and all this stuff. And it's like, I think that, I think that we're the only people that really care. No one really cares. <laughs> yes. No one really cares. P- people want to figure out who the best teams in college football are. And this little side you know, plot about like, well, who's the cute group of five Cinderella story this year. It doesn't, it, it's, it's cute but, well, and it's fun, but it doesn't really matter because those teams, we, the reason we never see them play is they never get a chance. They never get the opportunity in a playoff setting to do it. And they never will. Look, and the thing I, that has driven me nuts, cause I brought this Cincinnati, Ohio state discussion has come up, right? Oh, well, and I've had Ohio state cause I've made the case. And I even had a Cincinnati ranked ahead of Ohio state at four and Ohio state at five and Ohio state fans are like, Ooh, well look what happened last year. We beat them 42 to nothing. Did anybody care that LSU the year before last when they, so they were perfect last year. The year before, they lost 29 to nothing. Did anybody bring that up in any of the conversations last year? No, because they're judged by a different standard because they have a certain logo and they play in a certain conference. They are given preferential treatment than these group of five teams who are battling the perception that they're not as good, and yet they're never given the opportunity to prove they're just as good. 
LSU is the greatest team of all time. I, I agree. And it I beat agree. the hell out of the two teams it played. I agree. <laughs> how, do we know, how do we know Cincinnati isn't the greatest fall team of all time? Because it's not. Because they haven't lost. They haven't been beaten. I agree it's with not. you. Not. It's but a really how, good team, but, but it's not why the do best we, team. Agreed. But why do we hold? They've beaten some really good teams. They have beaten a lot of teams that are way above 500, way more than Texas A&M has. And yet Texas A&M is way better chance. Do y'all remember that LSU wasn't number one in the college football playoff rankings? Correct. For like a good piece of that run up to uh, the final rankings. Who was it? It was uh, Hudson, wasn't it? It was Ohio State. Yeah, oh, it was Ohio State. State. Yeah. Oh. So maybe that twenty nine to nothing was being held against LSU because back for the greatest second, team of all time was being held down. To LSU nothing. also was the greatest team of all time when they lost Alabama in the rematch with Jordan Jefferson as quarterback. Like that, I don't know. I want to rewind ten Five seconds. Minutes. Who are the great teams that Cincinnati's beaten this year? Uh, they, uh, I didn't say great teams, but well, they're the really who, good teams. Cause Texas A&M at least doesn't win over Florida. One what good is, win. One good win is all they have. I had these records last week. Army is what are they? Seven and two SMU is seven I mean, and three. I believe Memphis is still a, a, a team that's well over 500. Uh, I think they're going to have another one against Tulsa. Who's going to be ranked. They don't have the signature win over a team that's top five in the country the way the Texas A&M does. The one win. But I guarantee you Cincinnati could have gotten blown out by Bama the same way. Oh, I, so, I want it on the record. I think Cincinnati could beat A&M. I just I, – I, By the way, did you guys know, according to Vegas, BYU would have been a favorite over Texas A&M? Yeah. Neutral field? Yeah. It, really? Yeah. I th- last week. I yeah, before the game, of course. Yeah. yeah. But I think that's a lot of that was public perception too. But I, I, ah, I, that's the problem. So much is influenced by public perception that doesn't make it true. No, but I mean, you know what I think is something that's kind of glossed over here though? Cause Barton, you mentioned it. There have been a lot, I've seen a lot of our fellow media people being angry about Coastal's ranking. Cincinnati's getting lost because <laughs> I do think of the group of five teams, Cincinnati is the team that actually has a legitimate chance to compete against I, the playoff I agree team. With that. I feel like Coastal Carolina would go into the playoff against any of the other three teams there and just get waxed by five touchdowns. Nothing against them. It's just they're not on the same planet. I feel like Cincinnati could at least cause some problems. And I feel like everybody's just because Coastal's now the cute team. Everybody's ignoring that Cincinnati. I think Cincinnati's the one who got screwed more than anybody today. They both did. That's why my rant is about the group of five in general. Because I mean, because we all thought, at least I did, we thought BYU was going to just <laughs> just swipe away Coastal Carolina. This is an annoying it, hey, story. I do it, think my most of BYU wins yeah, that yeah. game. Did, did, did we all we think did that? All. Not all of us. You are right, Chip. You did yeah. call that one. Yeah, yes. I said so much disrespect for the Black Swarm defense, and that Black Swarm defense did a pretty good job at Heisman, wish he was, Zach Wilson, and that BYU offense. But I totally agree. Coastal Carolina is not going to stand on a neutral field in New Orleans or Pasadena and cause a problem for anybody in the college football playoff semifinals. I'm, I'm about to say something that's going to get me in trouble with the college football Twitterati, and I can already figure Coke is going to put this video on Twitter just to get me yelled at. But to go along with what you were just talking about, Danny, with perception, the rea- and this has been bothering me, it's annoyed. The reaction to that BYU Coastal game on Saturday night, was re- it was a fun game to watch. I enjoyed watching it. It had a thrilling ending. It was fun. But if that game happens between Ohio and Toledo on a Tuesday night, Nobody's calling it the greatest game of the or the game of the year. It was just a fun game between two good group of five ish teams. You gotta apply the context of it got scheduled on Wednesday. Apply the context of that, and it enhances at least what we got. I understand, but I'm saying that game was not the game of the year. It was a fun game with a fun moment and fun context, and if, people are overreacting to it. But here Sorry. on the flip side, 
if that is Alabama versus Florida in the SEC championship game, we're talking about it as an epic all-time game, the bet one of the best games we've ever seen. Like it works both ways. Or Texas A&M against Ohio State this Saturday. <laughs> yes, that would be awesome. I that love how is- everybody is on board with that, and yet there is zero chance it would happen, and yet uh-huh. everybody is suggesting it, which is a great idea. It just and won't the, happen. And the funny thing is that like wouldn't solve anything as far as Ohio State's problems are concerned. That wouldn't meet the game minimum because it's not a big. 10 game like why is everybody proposing that I, well, the college football playoff is nobody cares about whether or not ohio state's a big 10 champion we yeah. just care about Neither whether does the playoff <laughs> right true <laughs> true but can we can we at least agree that the one thing to take away is that right now there are five teams eligible for the playoff that's it and one of them isn't texas a&m it's the top four in florida that's it it's gonna oh, be see, four I of those teams why do you think a&m isn't eligible because a&m doesn't have a chance to make anything up because the only way Florida gets in is if Florida beats Alabama in the SEC championship game. AM lost this game this weekend. And I think who's it scheduled to play next week? Tennessee. Okay. So beating Tennessee, that's going to be enough to put it over Ohio State. But if, if Notre Ohio Dame beats Clemson, oh, you're still on the Clemson gets in even with two losses to Notre Dame? Mm-hmm. No way that happens. No way. Look that at happens. Iowa State and tell me that the committee doesn't like two lost teams. I mean, again, yeah, that's, that's we jumped ranking. off that. We jumped out, but. Iowa State at seven over Cincinnati at eight is one portion of this that led to the last 14 minutes. Uh, Coastal Carolina at 13 is another portion that uh, led to the last 13 minutes. I think Texas A&M still has a chance. And hey, I want to pose this. I threw this out earlier when Barton and I were doing instant reaction to Ohio State, Michigan. And I went back because I got called on it. And so I wanted to review. And I said, Texas A&M was dominant against Auburn. And Auburn led in that game, and Bo Nix had a crazy touchdown run. But I think it was just the fourth quarter, the fact that Auburn had no answer, and it was that physicality, and the fact that they were just like, no, we're going to run the ball at you, and you can't stop it. Did you all feel like that was a dominant win by Texas A&M over Auburn? No. Okay. I thought it was a good win. Solid. I mean, they were, uh, a, they were a tipped ball from losing that game. Mm-hmm. I wanted to see them win by 20. Yes. You know, like, yes, they, they, they looked like the better team. And, and I would, and frankly, in that first half, Auburn was lucky that they didn't go into halftime down, like, you know, 17 points or something. Like, I I think it felt like they were just hanging on by a thread throughout much of that game. But that's been A&M all year long. Like there's all either the, the, the defense doesn't show up or the offense doesn't show up or they let teams hang around. And it, it's not the makings of a, playoff caliber team that said I, I think they could just hang around and there could be some like if Clemson beats Notre Dame by 35 points I don't know if Notre Dame gets in if Notre Dame beats Clemson <laughs> by nah. 20, really yeah if Notre Dame Clemson beats Notre Dame 37 to 7 only Notre, Dame's done. Clemson. Notre Dame's done Notre Dame's done yeah if they get smoked by 30 I would say if they if it's a sideways game Notre Dame's not going to advance because that- I think there's two things working against them. It's also the optics. Like how do you, it, there is a recency bias of like, I know they're supposed to look at the whole body of work and it's supposed to be this whole compilation, but they can, and again, they can use anything they want to, uh, you know, to use, to put their criteria to, and they could say, well, this is a conference championship game. Clemson's a conference champion. This game mattered more than the first game around. So see ya, they can kick Notre Dame to the curb. I don't think it's an automatic that Notre Dame is in. Okay. Um, well, then real quick before we move on from Texas A&M, because this goes right back to a mailbag question from last week. That is probably my bias. It is my bias from betting on Auburn. It is my bias from expecting that Auburn was going to win that game. And when Texas A&M did win, I snapped back the other way. And all of a sudden I was like, dude, Texas A&M, dominant win. <laughs> it surpassed everyone's expectations worthy of a playoff. So uh, there we go to continue that conversation. All right, what else is uh, is standing out from the rankings to y'all? Either continued threads from here, this top four, five, six discussion, or, you know, Coastal Carolina down there at number 13, uh, trying to end up as the Sun Belt champion. Can they chase down Cincinnati? Cincinnati got its Tulsa game canceled. Now we're just waiting for the American Athletic Conference championship game, USC 4-0. Uh, there's there's some other pieces uh, that can come together. What stands out? I you know what I this I feel like this is right up your alley, Danny, because 
tell me this isn't the greatest example of SEC bias. Number 25, Missouri. five and three, the Alpha Nerd and the Missouri Tigers are put into the top 25 based on a three-game win streak against South Carolina, Vanderbilt, and Arkansas. <laughs> yes. At least they got Wisconsin out of there, though, who was ranked 25 at two and two in the AP top 25 poll. So that doesn't irritate me that bad. <laughs> I saw that. I was like, wait, what? You what, know, who? what? <laughs> right. You know what does bother me, though? And I think this is a team that has gotten just screwed over repeatedly, uh, especially in the last couple weeks, is Miami. Like Miami, and I know Duke is not that good, but Miami beat them 45 to nothing in a thoroughly dominant performance. They hadn't played in a few weeks, and that probably hurts them too. But they just sit there. They don't They don't have any chance to jump. Like, like I don't know. Like, is that, was that not anything that was impressive or noteworthy? Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I mean, they're, they're getting perpetually overlooked because I feel like they, when they lost to Clemson 42 to 17, I just feel like the committee, even though they hadn't met at that point, was just like, all right, cross that <laughs> off the list. You know what I mean? And, and also the problem is like, they've played really well since then. It's just, nobody's really done. None of the rest of the ACC have really benefited them in, in, in playing well enough to make their wins look good. And they're hurt. By not playing Notre Dame. So irony of irony, like we were originally thinking, hey, Miami's in a good spot. It doesn't get to play Notre Dame. That can improve its chances of get to the ACC championship. And now here we are. It's like, man, if they had had a chance to play Notre Dame and win that game, they might be in the playoff conversation. ACC is a little bit funny because you, on one hand, you've got four teams in the top 20, five teams in the top 25 right now, Clemson, Notre Dame, Miami, North Carolina, and NC State. On the other hand, the bottom of the conference is bad, oh. like bad, bad. And so it's like those two polar opposites are making it really tough for there to be the kind of results that are going to draw that, that kind of attention from the committee. Uh, it doesn't all, seem like the- Miami should. It seems like the biggest like issue here is that Iowa State is up there ahead of Miami. Iowa State's got two losses. Miami's got one. Miami's only loss is to a uh, playoff team, and Miami just – Smoke Duke last week, 48 to nothing. What, like there is nothing that says that Iowa State should be above Miami here. Can I just, can I, I just go? I like how Tom went back 30 seconds before. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to get a 30 second rollback. Um, we said the committee wrote off Miami, right? And I'm going to say, because I know we had a Miami fan. I'm, I'm taking up for the Miami fan as an ACC, uh, you know, faithful here. So Miami was written off, right? We can all agree that because mm-hmm. yeah. they lost 42 to 17, which is how many points? Just doing 25. Math. And Texas A&M lost to Alabama, and yet they're ranked fifth, and they're very much in the thick of things. Anybody know the score that came to Alabama and the point yeah. differential? 27? 28. Yeah, well, so like, Texas why, A&M has a top 10 win. Miami doesn't. I, but that, see, that's what drives me nuts. Because, I, like, <laughs> is that, like, does that matter that much that Miami yeah. is not their fault? It like, does you know, when you're – it does. Because you got to remember, like, When it comes to the college football playoff, we've talked about it. Alabama is on a tier way up here. And then you've got right now Ohio State, Notre Dame, and Clemson hanging out right here. And then there's a pretty significant drop off to number five because, like, I I texted you guys the uh, point spreads, like, from a friend of mine who's in the industry of like what Coastal Carolina spreads would be against the current top 10. I also asked him what the point spread would be between Ohio State and, and Texas A&M, and he told me it'd be 11 and a half points. There's a pretty significant gap between four and five, at least in the minds of the odds makers and the bookmakers. And I feel like the difference between five and 10 is probably not nearly as wide as the difference between four and five. And, and I what think about, that's... What about the... I would be curious what the spread would be between Ohio State and Florida. I could, if that would be, if that would I be, could text them and get back that, to you momentarily. I think that's like Florida to me is the interesting one because I feel like Florida just had a little bit of a hiccup against Texas A and M. They really controlled a lot of that game. Scored I mean, every they, time they had the ball, pretty much. Every time they had the ball, pretty much. And I, I think Florida is one fumble away from being kind of being a lock for the playoffs right now, uh, regardless of what happens in that Atlanta. And I don't think, like, if we're going to talk about the 48 to nothing win against Duke, then the Miami results that are hindering Miami, 42 to 17 matters to Clemson, but 19 to 14 against Virginia was not an impressive performance. 44 to 41 against NC State was a game that they basically had lost till Derek King went supernova. And then 25 to 24 against Virginia Tech, Virginia Tech blew that game. It has felt for a little while 
It's fair, that fair. Miami was playing with fire a little bit for that second. They last. also had a bunch of dudes out, <laughs> like half their team out with COVID. Sure. I both love and I hate using point spreads because I love using them when they back my point. Right. And yet I totally hear the frustration <laughs> because I like, I was going to go back and say, does anybody remember the spread of the game when Alabama was waxed by Clemson 44 to 16 in the national championship game? Bama was at like, I think it was close to eight or nine. They were Alabama was a eight or nine point favorite. It was at least a touchdown and you know, Clemson or comes in there and, and smokes them. Like I, Again, BYU was a 10 point favorite against Coastal and Coastal won outright. Like I get what the point of them doing it and why those point spreads are what they are, but it doesn't make things a certainty. Seven and a half to eight points, Ohio State over Florida. <clears throat> Which is probably, what do you think? What do you think of the spread of In Alabama? other words, he says that Florida would be a three point favorite against Dana. Right. Which they were the first time around in mm -hmm. College Station. Maybe it was four. Yeah. And the only reason I took Texas A&M is because it was going to be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> and it was. <laughs> it was not based on any X's or O's. It was only on the idea that it would be absolutely hilarious. Uh, if you want to get in on the mailbag, then you've got an opportunity to do that. You go and you leave a five-star review. You, you know, say something nice about the show. Say something critical about the show. Doesn't matter as long as it's five stars. Then put in your question. We'll add it to the big old bag of mail. You can follow him on Twitter at Barton Simmons. You can follow him at Danny Cannell. You can follow him at Tom Fernell. You can follow me at Chip underscore Patterson. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you.